Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again for having me. The coup in uh in, this, in Gabon is quite different from the ones we've seen in the other countries. It's it's a bit similar to the one we saw in Guinea, which is um, also as a result of uh, constitutional manipulation uh, by the president. Uh, the, this one, uh, it's not really surprising because um, it's there, there was an attempted coup when he was um, sick a couple of years ago. And then the, the, the his demeanor towards the election um, raised a lot of concern. You know, internet was um, uh, cut off for the whole country, and uh, people were um, not to vote in some certain ways. So uh, that is why we, we've seen a lot of um, demonstrations in support of the junta. Yeah. France has been pretty quiet on his ousting. Was Gabon's colonial past a factor here at all? Yes, um, it, it is, and it's also um, the same with um, the other um, former French colonies because these things are happening very at a very fast rate, and uh, it's um, giving France a lot of headache. And they, they also seem um, a bit isolated in Europe, especially when you compare it to, to what is happening in Niger, where they think other European nations have not... Um, uh, pushed really hard um, to stop this kind of thing. So it, it's it's hard times for, for France at the moment. Yeah. You know, with this sort of anti-French sentiment um, among several African countries, can it be destabilising um, to the region? It could be, it could be, because uh, France um, contributes a lot in terms of um, assisting in uh, the, the security architecture. Uh, they contribute to the security architecture of the region, especially the fight against um, terrorism in the Sahel um, and um, some parts of West Africa. Uh, but personally, I don't think they've handled this very well. Um, there are some things they could have done um, uh, better. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Russia's role. We know that the Wagner Group has played uh, played into this. Um, what impact has it had and what might now happen given its leadership has been killed? Yeah, um, just to be clear, um, I don't think Wagner has any hand in this cause. Not in Gabon. Um, I don't think... Yeah, but they obviously would step in if they have the opportunity because they, they have been always looking at the corners to see uh, opportunities and when uh, um, these opportunities arise, they will step into these opportunities. Uh, the death of Prigozhin will not really change anything because um, uh, he, he, he was a very influential figure uh, for Wagner, but I, I think we will um, see a change of leadership, especially strategically in those countries. Central African Republic and Mali, we would see someone rising um, um, in his shadows and coming in to step up. So I don't think it will change anything in the short term, but in the medium to long term, it might because um, uh, we've seen that even the relationship between uh, the Wagner Group and Russia itself has changed. So it, it might change, and, but Russia would have uh, more hand in, in anything that is happening now. Uh, I don't think Russia will be able to distance itself as it uh, is done in uh, in the previous years. And that's an interesting point. So do you think Russia still wants to command some sort of influence in this in this in this region? Absolutely, absolutely. Russia is trying to cement its um, um, it, it, its allies to uh, establish further allies in Africa. And Francophone Africa is uh, the uh, countries where um, Russia has not been able to penetrate uh, before now. So in the last three years, we've seen um, they've come in through Wagner in Burkina Faso. We've seen that in, in Mali. And now um, they are willing to also step in in, in the J. So the, the, yes, it will be an opportunity for Russia. Uh, um, so what we're hoping is that um, the U.S., interestingly, is taking a different position, especially in the J, uh, which is also a source of concern for France as well, because uh, France would have expected the U.S. to toe its lines and be more hardline when it comes to dealing with the junta. But yes, um, Russia would want to uh, entrench itself more uh, uh, because they've seen um, the support they could get on ground. Yeah, and it's almost like this this weak area where uh, Russia, even China, potentially can capitalise because there are so many major global problems that is even taking the US's attention away. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And again, when you look at the way Russia and China act, they, they, they come in to say, well, we are equal partners, we are partners in development, we will help you develop your infrastructures, we will help you develop your natural resources. So it will be quite different. And this is what is being accepted in some of these countries, because they feel um, China, especially, would come in and help them build infrastructures, road, rails, and things that could help them develop. So th this rhetoric is working well and um, is resonating um, uh, around um, Francophone Africa, especially in terms of the potential relationship they could have with other partners like Russia and um, China. Yes, but they both they come at a cost, I guess, as does as as has the past. Uh, Alenka, really good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.